Hello ladies and gentlemen, Javon here with the Dysfunctional Films. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna go through how to make a quick intro using Element 3D. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new composition. I'm gonna call this uh, intro. I'm gonna leave it at 720 by 1080 and I'm just gonna set it to 10 seconds long. And I'll set it down to 24 frames per second. I'm gonna hit okay. So now in my new composition, I'm gonna make sure I can see the entire comp. And I'm just gonna grab a text tool and I'm gonna call this um, intro text. Uh, oh, not what I meant to do. And I'll make some adjustments here. Um, I like this font. Maybe I'll scale it up. Uh, it's actually kind of cool. Yeah, that's fine for now. I'm gonna keep it like that. So, um, I'm just gonna center that in my comp. That's not important. Um, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna go new, solid, if you use people truck control, why I'm gonna call this element. Wow, what just happened? And I'm gonna make it uh, green. Because I don't know, I hate element, I think green. So now I'm gonna select the layer, I'm gonna go to effect. Video Copilot Element. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down into the custom layers, custom text and masks. I'm gonna put the intro text in the path layer one. We're gonna go into scene setup and you may already know how to do this if you go to tutorials on the website. I'm gonna hit shoot and now we have our intro text in 3D. Great. Um, and just for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, I'm gonna just grab a preset here. Um, that I might like. I don't think I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'll go to gold for this. I'm gonna hit okay. Uh, so now we can actually turn off our layer here so you cannot see it. And there we go, we have our text. So one of the key things I learned about animating text with text in Element 3D and After Effects is it's all a lot of it, it's in the camera movement and your camera settings. If you don't understand your camera, I really suggest you get a camera or um, you play around with effects in camera and after effects and learn what the different controls do. So um, let's first get a camera actually. I'm going to go to new camera or you can use alt, control alt shift c. I'll just call it camera 1. Uh, I always use 50 but I'll drop it to 35 millimeters and I'll hit ok. So now we have our new camera and after effects. So not, now that allows us to take the orbit tool and actually rotate around our text in 3D. Great. So um, I'm just gonna duplicate, duplicate our camera a couple times here. I'm gonna use Shortcut control, control D. I'm gonna duplicate it uh, six times maybe. And I'm just gonna jump through here in the timeline and using the, the end bracket tool, I'll set my in and out points. For, I believe it's shift. Shift and back, control and back. Nope, that's not it. I am derping. I am derping. Uh, alt and bracket, that's what it is. So alt and bracket for beginning and end, I'm just gonna adjust to, uh, that this is, there's no science behind this at all. It's all just random and preference. Often though, I do like to speed up towards the end of the animation, make my camera cuts much quicker. Um, and uh, one key thing about learning, understanding the camera and After Effects is that the camera on top is the one that it will be seen, per se. You may have multiple cameras layered on top of each other, but whichever camera's on top is the one that uh, will be shown in the, the uh, output. So uh, now I have my cameras here, and now it's just a matter of animating them. So if you open up the, if you expand the camera tool here, um, you have your position, uh, point of interest, orientation, X, Y, and Z rotation. If you go into camera options, you have a whole bunch more settings, zoom, depth of field, and whatnot. And we're gonna get into some of that later on. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into transform and just gonna play around here. So I'm just gonna orbit, um, I always seem to start from this side. I don't know why I do it. It's a habit, a really bad habit. I'm just gonna keyframe 
my position, point of interest. I'm just gonna go to the end of this sequence here. And I'll play with my position a bit. Uh, just like that. I like that. And then I'll go to the next one and I'll do the same exact thing. So I'll uh, collapse that, open up, transform, and it's just repetition. So I'm just going to speed this up for um, time purposes and I'll get back to you when I finish animating on my camera. Right, let's start. And so I just finished uh, animating here and uh, scrubbed through this. You can see uh, it's just a number of shots. Some of them get really close up and that's kind of the effect I'm going for, almost very cinematic. And the end shot I always just do a nice zoom out kind of thing. Um, so that's that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm, I'm gonna throw a background on here because it's kind of getting, we're looking at all this black. No joke intended. Um, so I'm just going to make a new solid, call it BG for the background. And I'll throw a. Actually, let's not do that. Let's create a rectangle. We're going to double click on the rectangle. So we're going to actually create a rectangle the size of our composition. Great. Um, and for the fill, we're actually going to click on the word fill, and this should open the fill option. We're going to go to radiant, radial gradient. We're going to hit OK. And I have mine preset, but what, um, what you can do is if you click on the, not the square now, you can set how you want your gradient. You can have linear or radial or whatnot. Um, and then I set one to white and other one to gray, uh, 125 for everything. And now the center should be white, and this allows me to control uh, where the end of the gradient is. So I'm just going to drag this all the way just the outside of the edge of the, my comb, and I get this nice, almost infinite floor, or infinite background, if you will. I'm going to rename the shape layer uh, BG for background. I'm going to throw it underneath everything else, and I'm going to lock it, because that's what's up. Um, the next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to create some lights for my scene. I'm going to create two uh, lights. I'm going to create a point light at around 70. Uh, I'm not sure if 70 is good. I'll pull it out front a little bit. I'm actually turn off my background so I can see how my lights are affecting. I want one light. Actually, I'm going to put this light behind my text. And I'm not sure if I'm behind it yet. I have to be now. Nope. No, wait. I don't. Know. Um, and I'm just going to increase the intensity. I'm going to hit. Oh, yeah, I am behind it. Right. Um, I'm going to hit T. And that should open up. I'm gonna bump that baby up quite a bit. So it's look like it's being backlit, similar to what the background is really doing to it. Um, and actually, I think that's fine for now. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I'm going to, I'm going to create, actually, I'm not sure if I wanna do this again. Yeah, you know what, I'll leave it like this for now. So the next thing you want to do to get the intro you want to look is you want to play with the camera settings. So this means your aperture, your, uh, your iris, um, pretty much any focus primarily to get the look you want. So for, and you're going to have to do this for each individual shot. And this may become tedious and boring, but this is really, you're putting in work to get really good work. Okay. So I'm turning depth of field on and um, drop my aperture down to like three. 
everything should kind of go blurry. No. Focus def distance of set is still 100. Okay, but things are now starting to blur. And I'm gonna do this at half res because this tends to slow down your computer. Um, I do have a decent computer, so it should be too much of a problem. I drop my aperture down to uh, one. So from here it should be mm, nah. Okay, I'll leave that for now. And I'm just gonna go through again, I'm gonna play the settings for each camera and I'll be back. Alright guys, so I just uh, played with the uh, focus and pretty much the aperture for all of these shots. Uh, I set my aperture to a really high number, um, so that way most of them will be out of blur and I can get these really nice fine lines um, in my in my text. Um, and then I did a lot of really close-up shots for, you know, suspense. Usually I would animate to a short track, um, which I can, I guess, get more precise with than with the beats. But I, our Vila Copilot's about to release their sound design tools, and that would be really cool and fun to work with. So that way I can animate here and then bring in the sound, or create the sound and animate for that. Um, so yeah, I, I like what I'm seeing. I left this one untouched because uh, I want my text to be seen. I don't want not too much fanciness with that. But uh, I like this how this is looking so far. And uh, I realized my light's on top of everything else. I'm gonna bring my light layer underneath out. And I'm gonna jump back into my element layer here. I'm gonna go down to the render settings. Uh, ambient occlusion. I always turn ambient occlusion on. I turn it up to its max 10. And uh, I expand the radius quite a bit. Um, so I get kind of like these heavy shadows. But it, um, it really helps to sell the effect. Um, um, so we're almost done here. One thing I need to do, I'm gonna select all my camera layers here. I'm gonna hit F. No, I'm. Is it F5? Nope, that's not. No, I'm just gonna expand it. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Stupid. Actually, no. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna unexpand it. I'm gonna hit U to bring up all my keyframes. And I'm not gonna key, I'm not gonna easy ease these because I don't want it to be too smooth. Maybe these first ones I might easy. Sorry about that, my recording seems to have cut out. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, select all these layers here. Um, shift click and select. I'm gonna hit U and I should bring up all my keyframes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select um, my first keyframes here. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna right click. Um, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Uh, no, yes. And that should create a much smoother uh, movement into the shot. And that's a good way to start. And what I'm gonna do is for these, I'm gonna offset my keyframes. So that way when this, uh, when it switches to the shot, um, the camera's already in motion. The camera's already being animated. It doesn't look like it's starting from a static shot, which is sometimes a really, it's a really big pet peeve for me seeing um, some of these shots that um, it looks like, it look, clearly looks animated. You want it to look very cinematic. You don't want it to be very distracted with all these uh, hard jerks. Um, so start your camera off in motion. Um, you could, in certain circumstances, I guess you could um, you could do that. But for these purposes, I like to do that. I like to keep my camera in motion. So next thing I want to do is uh, very important. I'm gonna turn motion blur on, and I like to do this at the end. Um, 
mainly because this will increase your render time for frames. Um, but it's really, really helps sell the effect tremendously. I remember I was doing a 2D animation and I didn't turn motion blur on and it looked, it looked horrible. But motion blur really helps to add that, um, that extra quality. Ambient occlusion is really, really good tool to kind of fake your shadows. Um, and you should really play around with the settings in there. Get to know After Effects. So we are pretty much done. Um, we, we just learned how to to create an After Effects intro from from scratch using Element 3D, all within After Effects. So if you like the story, let me know down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think um, about my tutorials, what I can do to make them better and make them easier for you. There will be a project file in the description down below, so you can download that. Um, you can use what I have done here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope I hope we can do a lot more tutorials. This is fun. I like this stuff. It looks so cool. Look at that. That's ridiculous. So anyway, I hope I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Let me know, like the video, share it. I you guys have whatever. Um, I'm gonna babble like an idiot for the next couple seconds, but I'm gonna see how it turns out. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time.